Hello everyone, welcome to Tron Call Desk Meeting 3. Today's agenda is firstly, Zachary will give an introduction to multi-signature and the protocol design. After that, Benson will talk about how to operate multi-signature permission in tape 105. Then, Wayne will share his research on comparison with other cryptographic multi-signature scheme and the implementation. At last, CN will lead us to discuss the optimization of multi-signature from the aspects of the performance. Okay, since last meeting, do you guys who have any updates? Uh, sure, Bruce. I got some updates for our latest Proposal 32. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Uh, just want to introduce Proposal 32 a little bit. Uh, so last week, Chong Network just approved the Proposal 32 for Solidity 0.5.6 uh, .9 functionality upgrade. So this proposal contains several new TVM instructions and new functionalities. And some details are here. In TIB43, we provide a new pre-compile function to help contract to verify a group of signatures with lower energy and lower CPU time, which is an optimization for easy recovery function. And in TIP44, we provide a more safer way this contract to judge whether an address is contract or not. And that developer can simply check its contract property for an address object for this purpose. And in TIP54, uh, now the transfer uh, address.transfer function support transfer TRX to an existing address and create a new account for this target address. I think this will do a lot more convenience for dev developers for the non-existing address transferring case. And for uh, TIP60, we provide a new pre compile function to help contract to verify multi-signature messages. This is a special implementation for just Tron accounts. Uh, so all the new upgrade is included in JavaTron Odyssey 3.6.6. And we strongly recommend you to upgrade your node if you haven't do so, which can avoid out of sync problems. So that's all uh, from my side. So anyone have questions? Uh, okay, okay, thank you, Tahao. Uh, to keep up with the latest upgrade, what do the dev developers need to do? Okay, so uh, so first, first thing I want to mention is if you are a full node maintainer, you, you may have to upgrade your full node version to obviously 3.6.6, and I'm, I'm pretty sure if you didn't do so, you might got uh, out of sync problems. So uh, another thing is uh, this year, uh, this uh, proposal is more related to dev developers. If I were dev developers, I may excited about TIP uh, 54 since it can save my energy and lower my cost when I handling exception for transfer function, and also. Uh, uh, if I have logic about signature validation, especially to validate more than one signatures uh, in a single smart contract transaction, I would like to check TIP for the three. So uh, that's my suggestions. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. Uh, I have I have a question about the TIP uh, fifty four. Okay. Uh, uh, you mean uh, when I transfer the uh, TX to an uh, non-existing address uh, and you will uh, and the uh, the Jarotron will create a new account for the uh, address. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so uh, whether I need to up, uh, upgrade to uh, Solidity uh, 0 0.5.9? Uh, yes, you have to use uh, the latest uh, compiler. Uh, which supports uh, 0.4, uh, 0 0.5.9. Uh, if I don't, uh, if I don't use uh, a, a new version, uh, will it be compiled uh, as normal? Oh, oh, uh, I see your point. So, so you mean just, uh, uh, so, so actually, you you don't have to do the um, 0.5.9 compiler. Uh, mm -hmm. It's not necessary, but I suggest, as you suggest, you to do so. Um, as long as you use a full node which support the latest code, uh, you don't need to worry about anything if you are a developer, a uh, dev developer, I mean. Oh, okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so uh, I have another question. Uh, uh, it is still about the uh, TIP uh, 54. Yeah. Uh, 
transport T transport TRX uh, uh, and uh, transport T uh, based TRC uh, turn uh, uh, can active the new account for the address. Uh, yes, I think so. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think you guys can, can continue. Uh, okay. Hello, everyone. Well, I'm Zachary. Uh, I will tell you something uh, like the basic situations of the multi-signature protocols. Well, as you all know that normal cryptocurrency transaction requires only one signature. Well, the multi-signature means uh, the signature is more than one. Okay. It gives every signature a weight. Basically, the total weight must must reach something a like a customized threshold before executed. While well, using multi signature, an account can be managed by separate private keys. Well, and the transactions created in a specific account can be signed by separate people. And well, I'm going to talk about the specification of multi signature operation permission and the way to implement user defined operation permission for multi signature. Okay? Well, firstly, let's see the protocol design. Uh, the relating structures in protocol, including account, well, permission, key, and transaction, there are four, four of them. Um, I'll show you something. You see? Is my screen okay? And first comes to account. And there are three different rows of permission. It's there are owner, witness, and active. Well, owner has the right to execute all the contracts. Witness is only for super representatives. Well, active contains a set of contracts selected execution permissions. Well, next this permission. You can see here is um, each bit of structure members' operations. One means true and zero means not. Here it is. Uh -huh. um, index refers to the definition of transaction, like, uh, for example, the index of a uh, account permission update contract, like that, and the contract type is 46. And next is key. The key includes two members, address, and that is the contrast. It's very simple. Well, wait, what is the signature wait? Okay. And next is transaction. Well, there's a field called permission ID. You can see it's here. Uh, the permission ID it corresponds to the ID. Well, that is in the permission. Any questions? Uh, hello. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, if uh, if I increase the system contract. In the future, will this line uh, be insufficient? Uh, in I think this is uh, I think this is uh, up to uh, two hundred and fifty uh, six different type of uh, contracts. Uh, yeah, I got your question. Well, basically. The operations support up to, as you said, up to two hundred and fifty six different type of contract and. For now, the maximum index of the system contract is is not more than 50. So as the number of system contract will not increase very quickly, it is enough within a period of time. Mm, X can be very long. Yeah. OK. 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 okay. Um, then I'm going to talk about different types of permissions. Well, uh, the first is owner permission. It could be used to control account ownership and adjust the permission structure. It can execute all the contracts, so it is the top one. Well, owner permission has some other features. There's a default owner if owner permission is now. Well, at a time you create a new account, the address will be added automatically. Okay. So, so, uh, what, so what, what the relationship between that? This owner permission and the owner address field in the account protocol. OK, 
okay. The account field represents the address of the contract of the oh, sorry of the account, which is not allowed to be modified. Well, but you can do it on order permission. Oh, so what kind of field just we don't need? Okay, got you. Mm-hmm. And so I have a uh, account private key, but my owner permission have been given to others. Can I still control this account, or can I access this account? Uh, no. As you just said, your owner permission has given to others. So even if you still have the private key, you cannot sign it. Oh, uh, so at the at this scenario, the private the key doesn't work. Only only the owner permission work, right? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay, good job. Okay, all good. So let's move on to witness permission. The witness is also called super representatives. We will call them as well usually. So they can use this kind of permission to manage the block producing. Only witness accounts are able to have this permission. So in a, I give you a very simple scenario. Um, when I ask all deploys a witness node on a cloud server, and in order to keep this account safe, only producing permission will be given. Well, the account cannot do anything other than producing block, just like something like transfer or yeah. So even if the account information is known to others, their possessions will not be lost. Um, okay, anything to ask? So, I have a question. Uh, do I, uh, if I don't configure the witness permission, do I need to modify my configuration files? Um, okay, I got your question. So, well, basically, if you're not running a witness node, that means you don't have witness permission. So, there's no need to do this. Okay. All right, next is the active permission. Well, active permission is composed a set of contract execution permission, like creating a new account, transferring, like that. And the most important feature of active permission is that it can customize other permissions. For example, you can allow others to freeze or unfreeze your possessions or, and give the transfer right to separate people. Well, uh, this one thing needs to be noticed is that if you have to active permission to execute permission of account permission update contract, well, you have the highest permission. So this requires a special attention. Oh, so, oh, yeah, so, so just like upgrade permission to owner permission, which is the highest one, but that is that security enough? Is there any problem with the security, something like that? Um, well, we offer a high degree of flexibility, so, but as long as you pay attention when setting permissions, uh, set active permission of account permission update contract to false, there will be no problem. Excuse me, I have one question. So if I use the account permission update contract to active permission, can I refer to the permission? Yes, you can use account permission update contract to revert it again. Okay, so how many multi signature transactions are there in the Tron network now? Um, I have not statistics the data. Um, well, after this meeting, I will publish the specific data. So sorry for that. Okay, never mind. Thank you. Okay. Um, no other questions, so that's basically all from me. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Zachary. Okay, now I, I would like to talk about multi signature permission operation. It is proposed on TIP 105. Currently, it's still in draft phase. Let me share the, the TIP 105 with a minute. With a minute. My screen now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
again. Uh, Elsa, uh, actually, I, I got one question here. And uh, so can you just give us some details, knowledge about uh, what the relationship between TIP-16 you just mentioned and uh, this TIP-105? Okay, uh, TIP-105 is a supplement of TIP-16. It describes how multi-signature permission is managed. Uh, there might be some overlap between uh, Sakharov's introduction. So uh, Sakharov introduced the last three types of permission. So um, it's a, it's to implement this, as you can see from my screen, three attributes were added to account. They are owner underlying permission, witness underlying permission, and uh, active underlying permission. At the same time, three attributes were also added to permission. They are threshold, operations, and the keys. <coughs> I want to know what does these three members mean? <coughs> okay, uh, the threshold means it indicates the threshold of the signature weight. The key includes two parts of the address and the weight, as Sakura also mentioned previously. And the member operation has 32 bytes, which means 256 bits. Each bit of each bit of, of the operation represents one contract type, and the value of that bit represent the, represents the permission of that contract type. So, so, so you mean they are, they have totally uh, 20, 256, uh, which means uh, at most at the most they had two hundred twenty six contract type. So, I I, I, have, I have a question for you. Is that enough in the future? I well, mean, maybe. Make sure I mentioned this before. Yeah, yeah. Sakura also mentioned it before. So we have now defined predefined thirty two contract type. It I would say it is far away from two hundred and fifty six. Uh, as Sakura mentioned previously, the number of system contracts will not increase very quickly. So basically, we would say there will be no risk in short term. In short term. And of course, we will look for a long-term solution if it's close to 256. What are cool. the contract types defined at the present? And how to define it in operations? Okay, here you can see the contract type definition list. Currently, we have uh, account create contract, transfer contract, transfer asset contract, and so on. The operation value is used to define the permissions. I will introduce how it works. So each bit of the operation represents the one contract type. Here you can see the first bit represents this account create, uh, sorry, account create contract. And the second bit represents transfer contract. For example, if the value of the first bit equals one, it means that the user has account create contract permission. If the value of the second bit equals zero, it means the transfer contract is not allowed. Okay. So basically by this rule, the operation value will be generated based on selected permissions. And here you can find more technical details if you are interested. A last one note for all of you. So please pay attention to this account permission update contract. Once users get this permission, they can modify all the permissions. Okay, uh, so I, I see your point. And uh, can you just summarize, uh, so what's the advantage of TIP-105? Okay, with this TIP-105, the account permission management will be much more flexible, and it can meet different requirements from, uh, and it can meet different requirements of the permission management. Okay. Um, so you just mentioned the account permission update contract. So how can how can someone just change the permission? If Generally speaking, it it will be divided into four steps. So the first, the user need to call call this get account function to get the original permission data. The second step, user need to change the permission data, and the third step, build a new transaction and sign it. The last step, send the transaction transaction to the blockchain. The permission will be updated accordingly later. Oh, okay, I see, Benzi. Thank you. Any question? If no, 
That is almost my part. I will move to the next stakeholder and stop sharing. Thanks. Okay, now let's talk about the comparisons of multi signature implementations from cryptographic view. So, <coughs> explicit cryptographic algorithm of true multi signature implementation. Okay, true multi signature is based on ECDSA signature. The full name of it is Elliptic Curve Digital Signature Algorithm. It's a variant of the digital signature uh, algorithm, uh, which uses elliptic curve uh, cryptography. And uh, what about its security? Uh, its security is based on the elliptic curve decrypt uh, logarithm. The signature of ECDSA is consists of two scalar, uh, usually called R and S. It's simple and easy to implement. So are there any other cryptographic technology uh, which can implement uh, the multi-signature? Mm, as I know, there are two other cryptographic algorithms that can be used for multi-signature. Uh, they are SHOR a signature and BLS signature. All of them are elliptic curve signature. Okay, we now got one question. What's the difference yeah. for the ECDSA, the SHINOR and the BLS? Uh, okay, a uh, Schnorr signature is similar with ECDSA in algorithm structure, but its signature is consists of one elliptic curve point and one scalar. And what's the advantages and the disadvantages of the Schnorr signature? Mm, Schnorr can implement the batch signature verification, key aggregation, and uh, the multi signature, but it requires multiple rounds of inter action between the signers during multi-signature implementation. Um, furthermore, the M of N multi-signature needs to concrete the Merkle tree and leads to space cost. So I would say Schnorr multi-signature is not efficient in practical use. And then what about the BRS signature? Uh, okay. Mm, BIS signature is based on uh, elliptic curve and uh, uh, bilinear pairings. It can implement the signature aggregation, key aggregation, and the multi signature. BLS algorithm is quite simple. Uh, the signature result is one, is only one elliptic curve point. Okay, can ECDSA be replaced by BLS in Tron multi signature? BLS do not have uh, yes BLS do have many advantages. Uh, however, it is not perfect. It requires parameters initialized, and uh, the uh, bilinear pairing in BLS is very complex. It is not efficiently practiced. Um, further optimization is needed if we want to use it. Um, I have heard about that. About that, the BLS is utilized in Ethereum for multi signature implementation. Do you know why do they choose BLS? Mm, actually, a BLS algorithm is simple and easy to implement. The low efficiency is related to ECSA. If you don't care much about the efficiency, it should be okay to use it. Mm, so, in a word, the ECSA is simple and efficient compared to Schnorr and BLS signature. That is why it is used in Chuang. So, uh, any questions, one more? <coughs> oh, I think. Uh, okay. Uh, so, I will talk the next uh, topic. Um, I will compare with other implementation um, with uh, other. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have a question. Okay. Uh, how does the multi signature is implemented? Where the multi multiple users send the send message in par parallel, or they send the message with previous uh, signature one by one in order? In true multi signature implementation. Multi users send the same message, uh, so they can do it in parallel, and uh, the multi signature just put the separate signature together. 
uh, so uh, so when uh, when the multi signature uh, will be collected together? Uh, uh, you mean the when it is put the signature together? Uh, uh, yes, uh, 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 the the last one uh, will uh, connect the uh, uh, the uh, separator signature. Uh, actually, it is the uh, next one before. For example, we have uh, three people. Uh, yeah. When the first one stands, uh, we can call it A, and the second one, it is based uh, on uh, based on the previous uh, standard as state. You know, so after B uh, in signs, and the uh, signatures will be A and B. So if the last user sign, the sign will be, the signature will be A. B, C. So uh, actually, it is the next one. It will put the previous user's sign. Okay. Uh, but, but I think this is uh, one by one. Uh, yes, yeah. one by one. Yeah, I think so. Yes, one by one. How? What? What you mentioned parallel? Uh, so, uh, so, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the latter will use uh, the. Uh, the former, the former data and the uh, and the signature data. Uh, so actually, now you can do it one by one, and uh, you can and you can put all the uh, uh, signature together. But you must put the you must get all the signs. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, hello, Will. I have a question. Uh, okay. That means. Strong multi signature support to sign in sequence. Yeah. For example, in a company, uh, to apply for a uh, for a uh, expense report, employee sign an expense report first. Then after that, the manager needs to sign to remove, and then the accountant to sign, and after many other signatures, finally it reaches to the VP. Uh, can you repeat your question? I don't. Uh... I mean, Chao multi signature supports users to sign in sequence, right? To sign in order. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like only after A sign the transaction, B can sign it, right? Uh, no. Uh, we you can do it uh, in in parallel, and uh, you can sign it one by one. I, I, so, um, they did not only do it uh, in order. You can do in parallel. No, no. Oh, I mean, uh, in real. No, what the, I mean, I, what they say, they have no any dependency between the different user, different okay. user sign the sign the signature, the signature. I, I guess they so they can do it parallel, right? Oh, yes, yeah, yes, yeah. yeah. So it, it actually it is not depends the previous, but you can. So, do it. so after all the user finish the signature, so you just put they together. Right. Yes. Okay. I guess the, so, that's the thing. So the signature uh, signatures are uh, independent. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Independent. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is independent. Oh, okay. okay. I okay. understand. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, so uh, in the past, I did some research on some other implications in blockchain industry. And essentially speaking, the multi signature functions in BTC, ETH, and US and Tron are the same. They both want to resolve the problem of controlling a size of multi people and to enhance its security. But for the implementation, they also have some differences. And for BTC, it is called M of N multi sig, which means a public key script that provides M number of public keys. And it requires a corresponding signature script provide a minimum number of signatures corresponding to the provided public keys, and M is no longer than N. Um, okay, so is there any difference in use of BTC multi signature? Um, before we use multi signature in BTC, we should create M of M redeem script by using N public keys. And uh, use this script to do multi signature. So, so can you explain a little bit what about the M of N, something like that? Uh, 
Uh, so as I mentioned uh, before, M is the uh, minimum number you must uh, assign, and N is uh, all the users together. So if, oh. if you, uh, you have N users, uh, and uh, you must define the M uh, pub public key, or uh, you must uh, use the M user to sign the uh, you sign the trans transaction data. Okay, okay, so minimum, uh, so yeah. they, have, they have totally have M, M, M user, right? They totally have N, N, we have N, N user, yeah. okay, what about, what about M? M is the number you must assign. Okay, okay, yeah. So what, what yeah. the relationship between the M and N, so M must be greater than M? Yeah, the M is must included in the N. Oh, okay, okay. Okay, got you. Yeah, cool. Cool. So in, in other words, the uh, isn't the multi signature or ETH provided by the system? Uh, as far as I know, ETH only provides basic structure verification operations for contract calls. Uh, so it uses a smart contract to implement multi-signature and users should write a smart contract by themselves. Okay? Okay, so for US, the multi signature multi is similar with uh, Trump in some aspects. It also has permission width and uh, stretch hold. Uh, but in the permission, every account has two default named permissions when created. It is owner and active. They have a parent and child relationship by default. Although this can be customized by ID other permission levels and uh, hierarchies. As a result, the active permission can do anything the owner permission can, except changing the keys associated with the owner. More than that, it allows to create custom hierarchical permissions that stem from the owner permission. Each account permission can be linked to an authority table, which is used to determine whether a given action also authorization can be satisfied. It, uh, it's similar to the operations by Tron. Mm, so, in conclusion, we just talk about the implementation in other blockchain industries briefly, not include the details. Okay, hello, Ryan. Uh, what okay. feature of Tron multi signature is unique compared to others, and what's the innovation? Uh, uh, that's a good question. Actually, multi signature is uh, relatively uh, mature. And each blockchain implements it depends on its own basic technologies such as the account model and the transaction. In generally, a traumatic signature is very flexible and it can handle it very easily. You can study how to use it in a very short time. It uses operation information to determine which type of transaction can be signed by which permission. And the users can change it by, it by themselves. And the users have the full control. More than that, we provide the witness permission for SR to solve their special problems. We specify witness permission for SR. Also, rise the use can only generate blocks, but nothing. And so it's very useful in maintenance good node. Okay, thank you, Will. Yes. Uh, we need to talk about the possible optimization of multi-signature. Uh, yes. Uh... Uh, performance uh, is a particular concern uh, in the selection of our solution. Uh, since we do not use the aggregate signatures, so if multiple people sign a transaction, uh, we will face the problem of verifying multi signature uh, in one transaction. Uh, so we need to discuss uh, how to improve the performance. Currently, Chrome have limited the number of signatures for a transaction. Um, but I think just by limiting the number of signatures does not seem to be a perfect solution. And may cause restrictions on using. What do you think? Uh, yes, you're right. Uh, but uh, uh, the current limit is not too small. Uh, so it will, not, uh, it will be able to meet the most use case. Uh, and uh, we also adopted a method of verifying signatures in parallel. Oh, okay, so can you explain in specific how is this implemented? 
This problem involves a specific code. Uh, let me briefly describe. Uh, we divide all transactions in a block into two parts for execution. Uh, first, uh, perform signature verification together, and then perform specific tasks uh, such as transferring, uh, freezing. Uh, the former part is parallel, and the later part is serial. Uh, so why the verification and the execution cannot run in parallel? Because uh, verifying the signature uh, that doesn't uh, change the data in the database, uh, which is dataless, uh, but the execution process changes the state, uh, so it must be uh, uh, serial. Okay, can you talk more about how to implement the parallelism in the code? Uh, this may be a bit detailed, uh, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it's actually a thread pool, and uh, the signature of each transaction uh, is given to a thread to verify. Um, one transaction will, is given to one thread. If a transaction contains multiple signatures, then the transaction may take longer time to execute it for the, for the signature compared to the other transaction. It seems it's not it seems it doesn't solve the problem. Is it better that one signature is executed by one thread? Uh, um, the scheme you said is feasible, but uh, actually the effect is the same. Uh, for example, uh, there are more than 100 transactions in a block, uh, most of which are ordinary transactions. A node assume have like uh, 16 cores and the thread needs to perform about uh, 10 tasks, and one or two thread may only process two multi-signature transactions. So I think there will not be an increase in overall time. Mm. I think uh, mm, aggregate signature is a good way to break the limit. number limits of multi-signatures with high efficiency. Maybe you can use it to optimize the performance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it sounds like a good idea. Uh, aggregate, aggregate signature uh, is efficient for batch signature verification. Uh, we may need further research to see whether they are fit for multi-signature. I have heard that ETH 2.0 has adopted the BLS aggregation signature scheme. Um, have you considered it? Uh, BLS aggregation signatures are very actuative, uh, and uh, we have been paying attention. But uh, this solution is not perfect, uh, you know, uh, such as a longer verification time, uh, which is an order of magnitude slower than ECDSA. Uh, we also believe that uh, efficiency issues will eventually be resolved. So I think uh, uh, this part is done. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Hello, 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 Bruce. I, I, I have. Uh, uh, just one more question about that you mentioned before. Some some uh, guy asked question. You mentioned it that not increasing the uh, overall time. So can can you explain a little bit? Uh, because I'm I'm not so understand it very well. You just you just, you just give an example. You are asking Sin, right? Not not me, right? Oh uh, yeah yeah yeah. Sorry sorry yeah 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 she, yeah yeah. She give an example about the, how she do it to prove that. It does not uh, increasing in our all time, and then can you give a more detail about that example? How how it work? I mean, yeah. Uh, you, you mean the date, uh, uh, like like a like a performance test? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you mentioned that you have someone have a sixteen core, and then a, a sometimes run for ten ten tasks, and then something like that, and then you or and then you give a conclusion that. You are not increasing in in our time, right? How? And then can you give more uh, detail? Actually, I think uh, you can get uh, get that by the example I have mentioned. Uh, uh, you can get that from uh, from that aggregation. Uh, uh, right now, I do not uh, have any date. Maybe you can uh, post that on GitHub, or we can. 
discuss later. Okay, sure, 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 sure. I I I have to do some research about it. It's yeah, it's interesting topic. Okay. Okay, hello, hello, Sia. I have a question. Uh, oh, yeah. We use the multi signature in real scenarios, like I sign a transaction, and this transaction also need benson, like uh, all factories signature. So yeah. I need to send the transaction to benson or factory through Slack or other communication apps. Is there a way Benson can receive a sign notice automatically in their wallet after I sign and broadcast the transaction? Uh, actually, I think right now uh, many major uh, many major D app uh, like uh, Chosgame uh, or Chonlink has support multi signature. Uh, you can use that. Oh uh, uh, yes, but it is uh, I think it is a centralized service. I want a decentralized service. You know, it is a blockchain spirit, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So is it possible to give the transaction a status on the blockchain like? Uh, a transaction is written person to sign, like that. Uh, uh, actually, technically, technically, it's possible, but uh, uh, Chrome uh, is not supported yet. Uh, in technically, uh, oh, it's okay. Okay, it is possible, right? Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah uh, okay. Okay. Uh, but I think uh, do that offline is more uh, more easy. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, and uh, can you tell me how the multi signature performance impacts on TPS? Like, if 10% of the transaction newly generated on the blockchain are multi signature transaction, how will the TPS be slowed down? Uh, I think <clears throat> uh, if there are a limited uh, multi signature transaction, uh, in all, uh, uh, in a block, uh, it will uh, not lost too much performance. Oh, okay, uh, that is just an extreme example from me. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. So, does anyone who has some question? Okay, I think. That's pretty much all we need to talk about today. Uh, for the next meeting, I think Crypto uh, yesterday he emailed me he wants to discuss the bad node actors, like how to penalize the ones dropping blocks or not actually. I think that is a good topic. If there's something you want to talk about or to discuss, you can write the topic on the agenda issue of the meeting for as I create the issue. Okay? Uh, okay. Okay, so uh, and uh, today's meeting content will be noted and published on GitHub. Okay, any questions before I move on? Uh, no more. Uh, okay, our meeting ends here. Have a good day. See you guys. Uh, see you. Thank you. Thank you.